hit record again. So first, let me talk about the specific requirements for that collection paper. And everything I'm telling you right now is also in the direction sheet. So if you want to find those direction sheets, just go into our Blackboard page, hit assignments, and hit the folder for our hat where the, all, everything you need for our final presentation is there. But let me give you a nice visual of kind of what the different components of your paper should be. Your paper should begin with an introduction, and that introduction should tell us about the importance. So why is this topic important for you and for children to read? And the best thing is you guys have already done this. For all of you who have put energy into that blog post, you can more or less copy or paste what you did there. Just refine it a little bit so it's kind of in a more polished, professional format, and that's your introduction. So for a lot of us, check. We've already done that. The next thing you're going to want to do is tell me what are um, quality characteristics that you look for in a picture book? Which again, we did last week. So you're already, a lot of you already have a lot of this done. So you might share this by discussing how teachers or parents should select quality literature. Or you could just say, these are the things I look for uh, when I'm choosing books. And then explain how you found those books. So basically this section here, what's your process? What's the criteria you look for, and how do you go about finding those books? So that should be the second section of your paper. The third section is where you're really going to show me um, why those qualities are important to you, and you're going to do an in-depth analysis for two picture books, uh, telling me about what makes them high quality, their design, and also talking about representation a little bit. So, Chances are the two books that you do your book buzz on in your presentation will probably be the two books that you do your book analysis on. And that should be just about a paragraph each. And again, I want to reiterate, this is not a book summary, right? If I want a book summary, I can go to Amazon or Goodreads. This is where your voice comes in. What do you, as a children's literature expert, think about that book? And the last section of your paper should really be telling me how your collection connects to a course topic or issue we've discussed. So we've discussed a lot of issues in children's literature. We've talked about the issue of challenging texts. Challenging texts, not that they're hard to read for students, but that they have kind of taboo or emotionally troubling topics. So maybe your, uh, your topic connects to that. We've talked about representation diversity, stereotypes, you know, when we talked about Adichie's notion of a single story, does your collection connect to any of those things? So take a look back at some of our articles. We've also talked about taking a critical stance. Does your collection foster a critical stance? Or even thinking about reader response theory, how does your collection respond to that? So there's lots of different things you can think about. Do you have to talk about all of them? No, just choose a few that you think that your collection responds to the most. And this is where you get to use the professional text in your own voice, bring them together, uh, kind of to show me how they're supporting your thinking. So that's the collection paper that you're going to be writing in a nutshell. And by the way, kind of how we've structured class, a lot of this hopefully is already written for you, so you don't have too much to go. And that paper is just four to six pages. Now let's talk about the annotated bibliography. We've all done an annotated bibliography, and a lot of us have already started that annotated bibliography, and we're halfway through. So your annotated bibliography needs to include all 10 to 15 books in your collection. It should be written in APA format, so that citation is in APA format. If you are in education, um, then APA is going to be your go-to. Uh, books are going to be listed in alphabetical order by the author's last name. And then when it comes to the annotation where you write a paragraph at the bottom, this is going to be longer than um, what you did for your genre assignment. So you are going to include a three to five sentence annotation for each book that tells me the genre, a brief summary of the book, tells me what those quality features are and why it's included in your text set. Now I want to say a quick thing about genre. I've noticed that a lot of us are saying that the genre is fiction or nonfiction. I want to let you know that fiction and nonfiction are technically not genres, but they're categories 
of genres. So let's think about nonfiction, right? Not fantasy, nonfiction. Nonfiction, genres within the nonfiction are informational picture books or biographies. When we're thinking about fiction, there's several different categories. We have realistic fiction, fantasy, science fiction, historical fiction. And then we have some genres that could be either fiction or nonfiction. For example, a wordless picture book could be fiction or nonfiction. A graphic novel could be fiction or nonfiction. Poetry could be fiction or nonfiction. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't remember all these genres, guess what? They're in our textbook, so you can look at our textbook or also look at some of your handouts and notes that your classmates gave you from their genre projects. So now let's talk a little bit about paper submission. Rachel, I see your question. I'm gonna answer it right here. So when you submit your paper and your annotated bibliography, I'm gonna have you submit it like this. I'd like you to include a title page, your paper, your annotated bibliography, and you're gonna attach it all as one document. So on that title page, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just the name of your collection, your name, uh, our course number, and the date, right? And the reason being, not that that's super important, but for a lot of us, this just to kind of get used to college writing, right? This is a staple of APA writing uh, in the college setting. So I want us to get used to that. Then you're gonna have your paper. Your paper should be four to six pages. Now, Rachel asked, should it be double spaced or single spaced? Um, if it's four pages, I'm going to say it should be single space to get all that information in there. Um, I don't have a preference and I know you're thinking, then why do you even put a word limit on it? Kind of, I want four to six pages is where you should be, whether it's double or single spaced. Just make sure you hit all of those requirements. So I know that's not the direct answer you're looking for, that it should be this or that. I know personally, like I can only write in single space. I can't write in double space, where I know some people can only write in double space. So whatever looks best to you, I'm open there, but make sure you hit all those requirements, all right? So that's gonna be four to six pages plus references. So your references aren't included in that four to six pages. It might be a separate page at the end, right? If your references make up that one of those four pages, it's probably not enough four to six pages plus references. And when I say references, this is where you're letting me know who you've cited. Who are you leaning on to support your ideas? And those references are also written in APA format. And then you'll have your annotated bibliography. So there's already a link on Blackboard where you can submit that. So let me tell you about the due date. Um, I've pushed the due date one day back. So it's going to be due by the end of the day, Tuesday, April 27th. Again, put that in your calendar so you don't forget. And if for, I want us to stick to that deadline, um, but if something comes up, if, if some, talk to me, communicate with me, right? I want you all to be successful. You know, I do believe that we need to keep on with our deadlines, but if there is something that is really stopping or preventing you, talk to me, right? There is some flexibility depending on the situation. So that is the due date there. Oh, one last thing I wanna say, I wanna make one more plug for the Writing Center. Um, when we do our thought drafts, they are, you know, they can be in any format. I'm very open about it. I mean, a lot of you have heard me say, spelling doesn't matter here, we're just getting our ideas down. Absolutely, I believe when we are doing drafts of our thinking, that kind of stuff doesn't matter but this is a formal paper. And in life, we are gonna to have to present things formally. So this paper is one of those. So this is where things like spelling and grammar is going to count. So that's where the writing center comes in. Let them help you do the heavy lifting when it comes to grammar. Talk with them, make an appointment, and they can spot those things and guide you through it. They can get through a four to six page paper in one session. So book a session, if that's what you wanna focus on, tell them, this is what I'm, my main concern is. And they'll focus on that, our clarity of ideas. So use them as a resource. All right, any questions?